All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would do some summer grafting. Uh, we put on some grafts this spring as we do every year. We inevitably always do some grafting. I think this year I'm somewhere around like a 60% take rate. I did about 10 grafts and four of them failed. So I've got some trees here. I got this guy, this fig. I have a, a fig back here. And then I also have two persimmons I wanna graft. Um, so I failed at two of the figs, I failed at one of the persimmons, and I failed at one of the mulberries this year. Uh, so I'm gonna regraft some things in the summer, because why not, right? I mean, there is a nice timing window on a lot of this stuff, but who says you can't graft in the summer? You may obviously have a, a lower chance of success just based off of you know how hot it is out here and how much um, you know how much sun there is also and how easy it is for the scions to dry out um, so it may not be conducive maybe there's too much sap flow depending on what it is but we're going to do it anyway I've, I've had success at different times of the year if you just continually graft for those of you guys out there who are doing a lot of grafting if you just continually graft throughout the year um, and do sort of the process that I'm doing, eventually you're gonna have success, uh, close to 100%, unless you run out of wood uh, or your, your rootstock dies. Um, but here I have actually a graft that I put onto this fig tree and the fig tree itself, the rootstock's not really doing all that great. It's been through a war basically. It didn't grow all that much last year. Uh, we cut it back pretty significantly and then I only grafted it this spring and all the new shoots that are trying to come out, I've been basically taking them off. So the tree's not really happy about that, but what I did and went ahead and, and did was I, I looked at this particular graft. I'm gonna bring you guys in closer here in a minute. <clears throat> I inspected the graft itself and I wanted to see if indeed the graft had already taken. Sometimes they take and they don't necessarily leaf out. Um, if that's the case and they're not just leafing out, then you just gotta be patient. So in the case of this one, I really inspected this and it's pretty solid. It's, it's formed into one solid tree. So what'll basically end up happening is that I just gotta be patient and one of these times, this tree will then put out a shoot on that node that I grafted. Um, I may have to wait an entire season. I may have to wait until this tree goes dormant and then it wakes up the following year in the spring and that energy, that sudden surge of energy will have me um, send up a shoot on this particular shoot here. The only thing I got to watch out for is if it dries out because we still have a lot of time between now and the spring of next year. But uh, I could, I guess, regraft this, but why, why, go, why do that? You know, um, if the thing is already taken, I'm not necessarily in any rush. I think I could just be patient and hold on and, uh, you know, take care of the tree and it'll be fine. Um, so let me bring you guys in real quick and show you what I mean that this is already taken. You know, the node is right here. I'll zoom in as well for you guys. So the node's up here, but on the side, you can see this is a cleft graft. And if I just shake this a little bit, it's one solid piece. It has formed and fused on this side and it's also formed on the other side. So because it's, it's done that, excuse the, the camera there guys, because it's done that, um, it's taken. And I don't necessarily have to really redo this. It's taken on both sides of the graft. So this is gonna be a solid formation in the future. I just need to be patient. Um, but let me do a couple actual demonstrations here of graphs because you know, I'm not as lucky, I guess, with all of them like that. Um, so I guess my take percentage is a little higher than I thought. Maybe 66% uh, or something like that. I don't know. 70%. All right, so we're gonna do, I guess, let's do a fig here. We'll do the persimmon second. All right, so this guy, <clears throat> It's already got a lot of growth on it. You can see there's two varieties. I've already, I've already grafted two varieties onto it. We have, uh, what is this, white Madeira number one, and this is uh, Cotillo Verdal on the right. And then I have a branch back here, which I let the rootstock grow. 
last year. Uh, the rootstock is called Canadria, by the way. A nice, vigorous rootstock. And you can see the branch right here. And it's still putting out growth. It's trying to grow. So this branch is still active, is what I've been seeing. But the graft I put on here did not take. And therefore, um, I should reapply a new graft. And I have myself a little bit of scion wood left here. I could, I have a couple of nodes on this. I could break this up into two nodes to do separate grafts, but I don't think I'm going to do that. There's, um, I think I'm pretty, I think I have, I'm going to have a pretty good chance of succeeding here. So what I'm going to do with this one in particular, uh, this particular graft is I'm going to actually cut it all the way down here. And the reason for that is that there's a little bit of bark, a little bit of damage here to the cambium a little higher up. Maybe that had been interrupting, I guess, a little bit of the graft taking or not. But I'm going to cut it pretty low, and then I'm going to make my graft. Additionally, the growth over here and over here is kind of going to interfere with the growth at this point. It's just too low. So even if this graft takes, I'm probably not going to get all that much growth out of this this year. But I'm not necessarily worried about that. I would just rather have and see them take than anything else. Um, so we made our cuts there. I'm going to come in here and perform the cleft graft. We come in here and just make a score down the middle of the wood. You know what? Let me zoom in for you guys and show you exactly what I've done. <clears throat> There we go. So I just took my knife and just slid this down through the bark, which then separates this into two different pieces. And what I like about this one is that it's kind of on a slant. So when I put this in here um, and I insert this in, the nice thing about having this on a slant and cutting it in the way that I did um, is that essentially this is going to be able to support the weight. It's going to have a better center of gravity. If I had made my cut with the knife instead going down this way rather than going down this way, um, it wouldn't have had as good of a center of gravity to it, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'm going to basically just slide this down in here as far as I can get it without breaking anything. It looks good. It looks good on that side and on the other side of the cleft graft it also looks good. So I have no doubt assuming the scion wood doesn't dry out this should take. I have no doubt. Um, so I'm going to use my rubber band here and we're gonna wrap this around. There always is a chance that you could break the, the scion as well. I mean, it is kind of flimsy, you know, if you give it a little tug. So you don't wanna kind of mess with this. Ideally, maybe I could have went down to one node instead of two, and then it would have a, again, even a better center of gravity to it and it wouldn't have uh, <clears throat> nearly as much of a chance of breaking. And then the last thing here is just to wrap it with some parafilm. And you, uh, this is so important in the summer, more than any other time, because there is just so much heat. There is just so much um, sunlight. You may even want to consider, depending on where you guys live, you may want to graft your or wrap your grafts with tin foil and that will keep off some of that sun keep this thing from desiccating a little bit you may even want to do you know like a number a 
couple layers of the parafilm here. Now, I probably should have, I probably should have wrapped this before I put the Scion in. Because it is kind of flimsy and by me doing this, it's not really helping. All right, so that's, that's pretty decent. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I'm not overjoyed by the performance there, but it's better than nothing. And uh, yeah, I got it labeled here. So this, this guy's done. This one's ready to go. Hopefully maybe in the next couple weeks, um, it could be ready. It could take, um, and then if I'm really lucky, which seems a little bit less likely is that the graft will then not just take, but it will start leafing out. And that'd probably be the best scenario possible is to have um, the tree also leaf out. But I'll tell you, it's just not something that is likely because um, unfortunately, I'm gonna zoom out here. Unfortunately, the, uh, the graft is being towered over by so much other growth on the tree. It's just really, like I said, it's unlikely with the apical dominance of figs that I'll see much growth at all out of that particular graft this year. And I wonder if any of the scion wood's still good. It kind of looks a little dried out, which is a little, you know, not good to see, but <clears throat> I didn't necessarily really intend to graft these again, these persimmons again. I was really, I really like to wait till the spring and do my grafting in the spring, but I want to definitely have this variety. This guy here doesn't look, that doesn't look good to me. You know, you make cuts here and it just, it looks dead. So, um, yeah, I think the scion wood here <laughs> is not alive. At least parts of it are not alive. Yeah, like this part of here down here is much more green, more vibrant. The cambium seems to be intact. You make some cuts on the other pieces of wood here. These look more dried out, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, this one looks better, but it still doesn't really look great. This one looks all right. Maybe I should try this. I don't know. Problem is on this particular cutting, there's not really that many nodes. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to do the persimmons, guys. I think this is kind of a lost cause here. Let's see what this is doing up top. Yeah, this is all dead. This is Most of this is dead, yeah. So doing any sort of graft at this point with that wood is just really not going to result in, uh, in anything good for the most part. So um, I would just recommend, guys, get yourself some good scion. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed no matter how strong your rootstock is. You got to have both ready to go and they have to be right. Uh, otherwise, you won't succeed. But, you know, not the end of the world here. These persimmons, I, I can wait on this. It's just that I'd rather, would have rather have gotten them grafted this year if I could have helped it. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something. You got something out of this. Uh, we did do at least one graft and I showed you guys the other graft that we did that took. Um, and I'll show you one other, some other grafts that we did. I guess I'll take you guys real quickly around the yard in a way and show you different grafts that we did. Here's actually a graft that we put on in the spring of a variety called Aishia Black. This is a fig. You can see the uh, parafilm here is coming off as it does. And this side also took so I have two graphs, and they're actually doing really well. And uh, what I could do 
just pinch off the tip of this Aishia black graft and I would get some fruits forming along that branch on such a young graft. This one over here we put on, um, I think in the last couple weeks and it is actually taking back on this side. It looks like it's about to leaf out. So I'm not counting it just yet, but I will say that I am confident in that particular graft. And then I have over here, this is a graft of a apricot we put on this year. And hopefully I can get this on camera for you guys. Not really working out, <laughs> but you can see there's the parafilm and there's the rubber band and here's all the new growth it put out. It's looking really good actually, how much growth this thing has. It's on a standard plum rootstock. We put a, um, I even summer pruned it, took off the tips. But on that, that plum, we put an apricot on it. And then I'll show you one other one before I let you guys go. We had some Girardi grafts of mulberry, the variety Girardi. It's a dwarf mulberry. I grew out some seedlings last year and the seedlings, um, I dug them up and then transplanted them in different locations. And then in the spring this year, um, I grafted them and two of the three took, which I'm quite excited about. You can see that guy's down here. And uh, there is some fruits forming, believe it or not. You can make that out in there. And I've got it wrapped basically with this, uh, <laughs> it's basically a chicken wire with a stake in it just to keep any animals or even humans from potentially stepping on it. But uh, that's it there, guys. I uh, hope again, you guys learned something, you got something out of this. Grafting is really well worth doing. If you can uh, learn and you're willing to be patient to put the time in, it really is a skill I think that's well worth, uh, worth learning. For if you're growing fruit trees or any kind of food, I think it's, uh, it's really important. So yeah, thank you guys here for watching this one. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Uh, check out our other videos on grafting if you're interested. I'll put down a playlist. And then uh, check us out on our blog, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.